Hey guys, real quick, before the video starts, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some potential savings that I have for you. If you are into the CX or GL series bikes, you might be familiar with Rejuve Motorcycles. So they've reached out to me and they've given me a code to extend to you guys for 10% off of any of their products. They make exhaust systems, some, uh, some foot pegs, they make, uh, make a lot of things, a full mono shock conversion kit. So you can do like a bolt-on mono shock for your CX500 and they are a YSS suspension dealer. So anyway, I'm going to put the code in the description and you guys follow that, either follow the link, hit, you know, enter the code, save you 10% and it's a win-win-win for everybody. So anyway, back to the video. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video I'm working on the rear suspension of the GL650 here. Now my goal is to pack this full of a lot of information with different things you need to consider, some different parts, and uh, some different ideas that uh, you can use for setting this thing up. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay, so it's time to start working on the rear suspension for this bike. Now. My goal here is to have the bike with kind of a level stance that's probably a little bit higher than stock. So right now I have this thing set up on my table. I have the wheels, uh, you know, inch and a half off the ground, front and rear, and then I've leveled the suspension to make the engine, or I've raised the suspension to raise the bike to make the engine pretty level. Now, there's no sag in the front end right now, and obviously we're just sitting on a block in the rear. So it's time for me to start dialing in the suspension that I want to use and the links that I need. So to get to work on that, I need to, uh, of course, put a shock in this thing. Now, you'll notice the first video, uh, I had a red shock in here and I've got a lot of questions on this thing over the years. We're not using it. It's actually from a Kawasaki. I don't even want to say what model, but it, the spring rate is too light and sure, you could get an aftermarket spring for it and, and stiffen it up and stuff, but uh, we're not going to use this one. It's a little bit more expensive. So what we're going to use is a CBR 954 shock. Okay, these are really cheap, and uh, they they come recommended from another uh, builder named Kevin Murphy. He's got a few videos of some GL 650s on here. So uh, go ahead and search those things out. And he just prefers to use these. So I've been I've been talking with him, and and the spring rate is uh, probably a little higher than stock, which is what I wanted. And this one has a 14.6 uh, kilogram per millimeter, yeah, 14.6 kilogram per millimeter uh, spring rate. And this one is somewhere in like the 9.6 to 10 range, so it's a little light. Now, I don't know what the factory spring rate is. Uh, that thing I, I tossed long ago, and I can't really seem to find any dedicated information telling me that. But with people who have done this swap, such as Kevin, he says this thing rides a little bit stiffer than stock, which is what I want. Anyway, here's some more things to consider. Now, as you know, GL series bikes, they have this ProLink setup. They're already mono-shocked. And the ProLink, you know, basically is just a play on just having a linkage. Now, we can raise this thing up and down, and you can see how this works. So, as the suspension compresses, your, your pivot right here is, it's gonna pivot along here. This is tied into the chassis. This point is gonna be raised upward and that's going to be compressing your shock. So that's where that force comes from. So there's a difference between a GL500 and a GL650 in this middle link here. This is your standard GL650 link. Notice it's a big cast iron piece and uh, it's solid through here. Okay. This is a GL500 link. Now these two components right here are exactly the same. So this is a bolt-on type item. Now, this is a GL500 link, as I mentioned, and this has uh, a cast iron bottom with this steel piece welded onto it. So this is the item you're probably going to need to swap on any of these shocks. You can see it's gonna fit in here really nice, but we're, we're gonna go a bit, a bit further. So the uh, 954 shock, if you try to put it in this bike, it's gonna sit way too low. It's a little bit too short. So Kevin prefers to uh, take the stock upper link for the 954, put this on here, he'll cut the stud off, and then he'll weld in some sort of bushing to uh, tie into the upper mount on the bike, and that's gonna, 
essentially, you know, lengthen the shock. Um, I think I'm going to go about it a little bit different, uh, a little bit different way and modify the actual lower link on the, on the bottom here. Now, I wouldn't want to be welding to cast iron, but since we're using this GL 500 series, this has regular steel. I'm thinking I can clean this up and weld, uh, fabricate some new tabs and put the mount about right there, essentially lengthening this. And that gives me, uh, plenty of clearance here for the bolt because when this thing is in its compressed position, there's really not enough room for the bolt to go in here comfortably. And then you can't really have the bolt head in here. It just complicates things. So I think by adding those tabs and essentially lengthening that bracket, I'm, I can get away with, uh, get away with having a nice, you know, a nice ride height that uh, isn't going to have any affected geometry. So anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to start doing some measuring and uh, get to work here. So I know the bike looks pretty tall right now. Uh, you got to you got to think this is going to be about an inch and a half lower. So our two by four is our measurement base here. And if I set this thing up at this height, imagining some seat foam here, this thing would be at about 32 inches of uh, standover height or seat height. So 32 inches, not bad. And that's with no suspension sag. So once you put the shock in there and then I let this thing off the table, it's going to naturally have some suspension sag in it and that'll lower, uh, maybe, maybe even up to an inch. So I can set it up a little on the tall side and then we can account for that sag and preload. And, uh, hopefully when we're all said and done between the adjustments in the front end and the adjustments in the rear, we can dial this thing in to sit level, you know, sit high enough, but not be too high. Because we definitely want to leave, you know, plenty of space in between here and the rear tire. I see a lot of GLs where people run the bar straight off the back. And then the bar is like this, this high off the tire. And you're just asking for clearance issues there. So another reason I built the subframe in an upward angle. All right. So I went ahead and I got the GL 500 link really cleaned up here. Now what I'm anticipating is welding a plate to the inside of this. So what I wanted to do is make sure I had clean metal to weld to. So I took my flap disc, cleaned it up all around the edges, inside, outside, wire wheeled the whole thing, and I'll still go ahead and clean it up with like, you know, a chemical. But another step I went ahead and did is I kind of countersunk the, the original hole here uh, in, in anticipation of probably like rosette welding the inside. So that'll allow me to get down in there a little bit tighter and I think that will be good. So what I'll try to do is create a, uh, a plate here. And then I'm thinking I might just go ahead and have these things laser cut. Like uh, maybe I'll produce a couple. I know I have a lot of people that are interested in rear shock. So maybe this could be a, a cool upgrade or something like that. And I can have, make kind of a kit, I guess. I don't know, or at least provide the plates that you would need. So as of now, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back on the bike. We'll hang the shock and then we'll figure out exactly how big our plates need to be. Now the bike right now is actually at the ride height that I want, you know, or at least the mock-up height. So this is the point where I have to build the shock, build the plates to make the shock fit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and space the shock out just a little bit to where it would be naturally. And what that tells me That distance to that distance. So it's going to be kicked back a little bit more than 
might be stock. And one issue I want to make sure is like, since this piece is rotating forward, this is going to essentially rotate this mount backwards. And I don't want it to rotate backwards so far to where it kind of binds or something. So I need to keep it as far forward as possible. So just barely off of the, off the frame in the front. And this, you know, and this may not, may not work at all. This may not work at all, but it's something I want to try regardless. So we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm just getting ready to start cutting out some brackets to uh, kind of mock up how this is going to fit. And I just wanted to go over how I make some of these little brackets and tabs and stuff. This isn't rocket science. Um, I get a lot of questions all the time about how I mount the shocks, how I take the measurements, and a lot of times it's it's not really based off of I need a certain dimension, I'm just building space. So like I traced the uh, the stock lower mount, the lower mount tab on here, I traced the bolt hole, and then I took a measurement off of the bolt hole on the shock, found the center line of that, and I knew I needed about 30 millimeters dis you know difference. And then visually, if I'm looking at it, I knew I wanted the, the holes to basically just, like if you drew one, drew a line straight up, square, that the holes would almost just be bordering each other. So, you know, one on one side of the hole or line and one on the other side. So basically I just struck an arc at 30 millimeters and then I knew that putting that hole about here would have the offset that I needed. And then from there I can just draw out, you know, whatever shape bracket I want. So. This isn't gonna be, this is just my first try, but just an explanation of, of what I, you know, what I use. And then just to uh, draw circles and stuff, you, you know, use a bunch of washers. And a protractor, you'd have that. So, this is actually my grandfather's. Anyway, I'm gonna get to cutting this, see how that fits. got these tabs fitting exactly how I want here so just modified off the original design you know measure measure once cut eight times I think that's how that saying goes but anyway they'll sit in here like that I did for some reason I didn't think ahead on this uh, but I did drill a hole where I didn't need to drill a hole I was just like I center punched the uh, the lower mountain here but whatever there's still enough meat on there to where I can rosette that and uh, I'm thinking maybe I can use it as kind of an alignment pin with running a bolt through. But anyway, rambling. So I did have to keep it really close on the front here because the uh, the front linkage mount is, uh, it just gets real close, but that's fine. I can do a nice, a nice weld there, all the way around, on the inside, on the back side, and I can weld it everywhere. And uh, another bonus, I couldn't quite measure the uh, distance I had, but the shock does fit in here within that width just perfectly with like hardly zero slack. <clears throat> so I think what I'm gonna do now, um, I'll get the TIG out and I'm just gonna try to tack it in place. 
I'm gonna clean it up first and then tack it in place, mount it up, and just make sure it initially looks like it's gonna fit. Um, then I might might try to cycle it a little bit and then I'll I'll probably pull it back off if it if all looks good, full weld it and then uh, and then actually put the bike on the ground and cycle the suspension and jump up and down on it and just make sure it feels all right. And then uh, before I would call it completely done, since we'd be extending these tabs pretty far off of that base, what I'd want to do is build like a little lateral bracket, support bracket in the bottom here, just to give it a little bit more lateral support so you're not trying to like fold these tabs over, something like that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this cleaned up and then tacked up. So here this thing is on full ride height. I haven't adjusted any of the preload and the shock because it just feels about perfect. So right back up. Doesn't feel too stiff, but it has a nice a nice bit of support. So I like the preload that it's at. And if anything, the, the good thing is that I can bring it down and I can still bring it up. It's right in the middle of the window on the shock itself. So looking at the sag this thing has. I know my front forks are uh, they're definitely leaky, so they're just pushing fluid out right now, but uh, they'll probably stiffen up once I get a little bit of air in them. But this thing's gonna be, this thing's gonna feel great. And then stand over height, you know, you gotta think there's gonna be a little bit of foam on here, but it's not gonna be anything crazy, but I'm not very tall, I'm like five foot eight. I'm flat footing right, right now, so having a little bit of foam here with actual pressure on my pressure on the seat or on the foam, I'll probably still be very close to flat footing. So this thing's perfect. And I, I believe the customer is about my height as well, maybe a little bit taller, so he's not going to have any problem with this thing. Good clearance back here. You know, that's always a concern. I re I'm really happy with where this thing's at. Uh, one thing I'm going to have to do is probably extend the kickstand, like three quarters an inch, maybe. So that's gonna be my next project so I can roll this thing around and not worry about it. Yeah. All right guys, that does it for this video. We have the CBR 954 shock mounted up. It has great tire clearance, it has good preload. It feels like it's gonna be the right shock for this application. Again, I got this idea from Kevin Murphy and uh, you know, we did do it different ways. You know, he modifies the upper mount, but I chose to go ahead and modify the lower with those extended tabs on the GL500 link. But, you know, they're gonna work. So I'm really excited to get this thing out on the road, see how it performs both like handling wise and like if we're gonna go take this thing over, you know, who knows, jump it off a terrace or something like that. Cause it's gonna have some dual sport tires on it and will be a little bit extra fun and capable. So anyway, uh, uh, last reminder on the video I put b before this video with the Rejuve link. So Ollie makes some good products and he's really trying to help out the scene. And uh, I think that's, you know, 10% off is definitely really helpful. So go ahead and check that out. Look at some of his products. You might find something you're interested in. And anyway, to wrap it up, 
that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that it was informative, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.